Well, I mean, we uh, we don't yet know uh, the detail of the agreement, and therefore it's not possible to form a view uh, uh, about it. Uh, but certainly, uh, insofar as what is announced today is a political agreement to seek a treaty about Gibraltar between the UK and the EU that will enable uh, frontier fluidity and the basis of socio-economic life in this part of the world to continue uh, as it is now, I think that is hugely positive. Obviously, the devil would be in the detail. There are still matters to be negotiated, but it's very positive that we are embarked on this road, subject to the detail. And of course, the government will know what Gibraltar can um, uh, can bear and not bear in such an agreement. And we've just got to uh, trust the government, give them the space to negotiate in the next month, and and we'll all uh, make our uh, our views, form our views about the agreement uh, as and when it emerges. But yeah. on balance, and certainly my my personal view is that it was absolutely necessary for the government to make every possible effort to avoid a hard Brexit uh, at this border. I think people in Gibraltar probably understand that um, it would be necessary for Gibraltar to agree to things that we might not otherwise have wanted to agree, but it's necessary on balance to uh, avoid things that are even worse. And the question is, uh, when the agreement emerges, to weigh up the prize against the price. Uh, And and that is what we've got to give the government an opportunity to negotiate the best possible deal about. And as I say, they have a shrewd idea of what is viable and what is not in that respect. So in respect of the necessity of trying to to make um, something work at the frontier, you've spoken about how previously, how difficult it would be for Gibraltar for there to be a deal for the UK with the EU, but for Gibraltar not to have a deal, which was the situation that Gibraltar found itself in up until um, mid-afternoon today? Absolutely. A a situation where we're basically excluded from Europe, even uh, not just physically, but in trade terms and in mobility terms, even worse than Britain is excluded, is the worst possible scenario for Gibraltar, which would have very grave implications. They'd be survivable, but at a price. Uh, they would have considerable implications for our economic prosperity, for our quality of life, uh, for the general uh, uh, economic prosperity of Gibraltar. And that has got to be placed, I mean, avoiding that has got to be placed in the balance against the need to strike agreements uh, in, in necessary to avoid that. And of course, I, I mean, I can understand that people in Gibraltar uh, may have developed some concern, and alarm bells um, might have started ringing when people have heard this business about Spain being responsible for Gibraltar in the context of of the Schengen Agreement. Um, but it, it it doesn't have to be like that. We have to await the details to see how that's going to work. There are versions of that which would be wholly acceptable, in my opinion. There would be versions of it which would not be acceptable, in my opinion. Uh, And I think the government needs to be given time to deliver the version that is acceptable. Is it possible that we'll see a a return of sorts to some of the arrangements that were foreseen and described by the Cordova agreement that you helped to to bring to fruition when you were chief minister? It's a wholly different scenario. This is a treaty. These are legal arrangements in the context of an EU framework, Schengen. Uh, a key. Uh, uh, there are European rules to be abided by. There are European regimes to be accommodated. Um, Spain, Britain, and Gibraltar are not free to agree whatever they want by way of mobility. It's got to be made to fit into the legal framework that exists in Europe, which is the Schengen Agreement. Uh, and the question is, can we find a way of doing that that has no consequences for Gibraltar's sovereignty? jurisdiction or control, uh, which I think we all now agree is the definition of what would be too high a price. But I think there's plenty of leeway for government without straying into those areas uh, to deliver a 
an agreement for Gibraltar, and I think, and I think they've got to be uh, uh, not just given the time and the trust to do it, but I've, I've wished Godspeed because it's very important for Gibraltar. If it can't be, it can't be, but it's right to try it. The our agreements, the Godover agreements, were a very different kettle of fish. They were political agreements, not international legal agreements, uh, and they were in the context of Gibraltar remaining outside Schengen. Uh, whereas this appears to involve Gibraltar forming part of the Schengen space, even in circumstances where our uh, international protector, so to speak, the United Kingdom, is not itself part of Schengen. And that is uh, the circle that has to be squared. And, uh, and, and I suspect that that is where all the political um, uh, the, the horse trading is going on. Okay, so um, as you've said, the, the devil would be in the detail, um, but customs union has been floated as a, as a concept. Would you be supportive of that? Do you think that's something that Gibraltar should pursue in the negotiations that will now follow this agreement in principle? Well, look, clearly Brexit has been a seismic change of the European political landscape, and it affects us and our political landscape very consistently because it involves Britain. And it is not realistic to think that Gibraltar can have its cake and eat it in the sense of keeping all the advantages that it presently enjoys uh, without doing some degree uh, of agreement to avoid uh, the consequences of the changes that have happened. So uh, I, I, it, it is inevitable that we're going to have to consider not just the things that affect mobility of people, but also the things that affect mobility of goods. They're not, it's not necessary to do both. But from Gibraltar's perspective, it is important that any agreement that is struck is durable. Durable means that it survives changes of government in Spain. Therefore, the news that the chief minister has announced today that it would emerge as a treaty between the European Union and Britain uh, is very good news, not just because it becomes international law, uh, but it's an international law created by Britain and the EU, and therefore immune from changes of government in Spain, which, of course, what did for eventually uh, the God of the Agreements. So you think if, if a treaty were to be uh, achieved, that would make it bulletproof going forward, even if a, 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 you know, a right-wing coalition government of um, Pepe yeah. and Vox were to come into power in Spain? And that is the importance, A, of doing it by treaty, and B, probably, of trying to do goods as well as people. Because, of course, it, would be, it, it wouldn't deliver frontier fluidity if we made all manner of agreements to secure uh, getting past the door or not having to show our passports to the Policia Nacional, only to be made to queue up uh, to get past customs, um, which is where we are today. Very often the queues in Gibraltar are caused by, by customs and not by passport control. So if we want genuine frontier fluidity, immune from uh, interferences by politically motivated interference, Probably it has to be free of controls of both kinds, that is, passports and customs. Otherwise, the one that you haven't agreed on can be the source of a continuation of the use of the frontier for political purposes in the future. Very interesting. In the hands of the government. Sure. And, and finally, Sir Peter, um, as somebody who sort of oversaw uh, the economic development of Gibraltar for 16 years, how significant uh, is the agreement in principle that has just been announced? It's very significant politically. In other words, it, it, it is not significant in the sense that it is not the treaty. The treaty itself is not negotiated. I would guess that the parties are quite advanced in, in, the, in their discussions and perhaps even agreements on a number of issues that will find their way, their way into the text of the treaty. But that is not what has been announced today. What has been announced, indeed, that they've allowed themselves six months longer to negotiate all of that. What has been announced today, however, is important because it represents a solemn political agreement between the three governments 
uh, to bring that about, or at least to use good faith to bring that about. Uh, all of them have subscribed to the view that it is important that it should be uh, brought about for the benefit of communities on both sides of the, of the border. Uh, and that is a political commitment by this government in Spain and the government of Gibraltar, which I think is in the right direction and is what, what is required. Now, will that political commitment and that goodwill and that spirit deliver the treaty agreement, which is the prize? That, I think, will depend on the price that uh, Gibraltar is asked to pay for that. But we will have to pay a price. You don't get anything of value for nothing. But I think it can be done for a price that we should all feel worth paying. And that is what the government has got to do and will no doubt work at trying to achieve in the next six months. And as I said before, they've got to be given time uh, and the opportunity to do that. OK, so Peter, thanks a lot for your, I suppose, initial reactions to the agreement in principle agreed today. Um, I take this opportunity to wish you and your family the very best for 2021. Thank you very much, and you and all your uh, viewers and listeners too.